Hey, if you've got an addiction to eating your drywall and eating holes in the wall, or maybe your dog just scratches it and tears it up, I'm gonna show you how to fix that right after this. Okay, today we got a really common situation. This happens pretty often. I fixed a lot of these. This is when somebody has a really mean, aggressive dog like this one. Oh, don't give me that cute face. Okay, so he's a cute, cuddly dog. Anyway, this dog got left inside for a couple days by accident, and he did some damage to the wall in a couple of different places. And the owner tried to start the repairs. So the mud you see on the wall around here, that's him starting it and he realized he was in an over his head so he decided to call me he actually found me on youtube and i'm going to walk you through the simplest way to repair this without having to cut out any drywall and i'm going to show you an easy way to spray the texture okay like normal the first thing to do is cover your floors and do some masking now normally i just do some basic masking and then start the repair process and then I mask more. In this case there wasn't much to do so I'm just going to mask off the baseboard trim just so I don't get mud all over it and for texture spraying purposes I'll run some up the door and on the wall on the left. So first thing I did is just clean the hole up just a little bit now. I'm gonna do something different on this one it's a little different than I've showed you in the past I'm not going to do a California patch. I'm not going to do backing. Either one of those ways will work. This time I'm just going to glue in a piece that matches the shape of the hole. This hole luckily already has kind of a bevel to it thanks to the dog. And that bevel gave me an idea to just cut a piece that fits into it and glue it in because it's got quite a bit of surface and because of the bevel, it's not going to just fall in there. And the hot mud I'm gonna use will glue it in. And between all that, it's going to be rock solid. Now I've done a video recently where I just filled a hole this size and it was rock solid. I could not knock it out of there. So I'm convinced this is gonna be plenty strong. And as you can see, I'm just eyeballing it. I look at the shape and then I'm freehand cutting it I've cut so many of these this way. I've probably cut a thousand patches like this where I just eyeball the shape and cut it. And I'm just pretty good at it. But if you want, you could make the circle more round and cut a perfectly round one. So I just cut the basic shape and then I start beveling it to fit the bevel of the hole. Then I test fit it a little bit until I get it to where it's sitting just slightly below flush with the surface of the existing rock and that's to allow for a little bit of drywall mud to go behind it and I want to have a slight fill on top of it which will make it even stronger. Now the other one didn't go all the way through so it's much simpler so I got all the masking done and we're ready to move on to fixing that one. So what I'm going to do in this case uh, I'm using fast setting joint compound which we call hot mud in this case i'm using 20 minute mud because i actually have one more that i didn't show you there's one way over there on the right this one the one behind the couch and one more so we're just going to fill the hole around the edges with plenty of hot mud so that when i put this patch in here it's going to be stuck down and then i'm just going to push the patch in and make sure it's sitting slightly below the surface of the existing rock and just kind of wipe it down and now it's basically glued in. Now I'm using a fairly thick batch that I mixed up. You don't want to use too thin or it may uh, the piece may try and fall back out but you can see here it sits below the surface nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and just apply an immediate coat all over the whole thing now it's kind of a mess as you can see so we're just going to coat pretty much everything with one good solid coat 
Now, I, w I was putting everything on with a 12-inch here, but because I ended up putting it on so wide, I decided to go get my 14 and go over it just so I leave fewer lap marks, and it does help to float it out better and get it a little bit smoother. I actually went looking for my level 5 skim coating blade, but I had forgotten it at home, so I settled on the 14-inch knife. The skim coating blade would have flattened it out even better and left no lap marks. It's a great tool for this kind of repair. Now this one's much easier. Now if I didn't mention it on the other one, you need to scrape all around the repair area because you're trying to knock off these little bumps that are sticking out a little further than average. That'll help keep your knife from chattering and you won't have to put it on so thick. Now I'm using uh, my level five all stainless steel to put it on. It's a really nice looking knife and it feels really good. Then I just took my bigger knife and wiped across it a few times. And what I was shooting for was nice and flat. And you can see I kind of wiped too much out. So put a little bit back in. And then this next time I stand my knife up more and that takes off less. It, it doesn't bend into the hole so much. Because on a repair like this, you don't want any uh, depth to it at all. You want it really flat. I could have just used my 6 inch. It probably would have been better. Now the advantage of hot mud is it doesn't shrink. You saw real quickly no shrinkage and all you have to do is wait about 25 minutes and you can recoat it. So we put another thin coat on this then move over to the other one and on this one it's got a few lap marks so I'm going to scrape it with my 6 inch and knock those off then put another coat on this one, let that one set up, and we'll be ready to move on to the next part. So now I checked it out, and I got it on flat enough and smooth enough, so I'm ready to do the final step. So I'm going around and scraping right up tight to all the trim to make sure that my mud is nice and square and tight. You don't want any rolled beads of mud. Then I'm wet sanding all the edges because I didn't have a fan to fan dry it at all. And I used the uh, green scrubber pad on part of it and the sponge on part of it. And you, what you want to get is this feather edge that looks like this. Because if you leave any edge at all when you spray a texture, it's going to show through. Then you want to use some uh, mud, like some regular all-purpose or hot mud, and touch up any last remaining defects like bubbles, scratches, etc. Then clean up the masking, make sure it's ready for spraying. Then we're going to move on to spraying the texture. Today I decided to use the Easy Pro Texture Sprayer, which I demonstrated previously in the video. So if you want to see all the instructions on how to use it, uh, check out that video. I'll put a thumbnail at the end of this video. But basically this is a, a easier texture sprayer than my texture hopper. It uses a smaller compressor and it has less cleanup so I decided to use it today. The first thing you want to do is do some test spraying off to the side. Make sure you're getting the pattern right. If you haven't played with this thing before you probably want to set up a little wall of plastic or a piece of sheetrock or something and test it and learn how to use it right because it's a little tricky. It's a little different than a hopper but once you get the hang of it you can see it goes on pretty quickly and it took me one bag of texture to spray all five of these repairs, so it wasn't too bad. And in the end, the texture matched, the customer was happy, and Fido even approved. So all in all, it came out good. Hey, if you wanna increase your learning power a thousand percent, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up. After you subscribe, look for that bell click the bell and you'll get notified of all the videos and by hitting that thumbs up you'll really help our channel get shown more because that's how YouTube determines who gets shown the most. Thanks a lot.